Hello, good morning, this is Dan. Welcome to Anglo Guys. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. They are greatly appreciated. Um, this is the daily forecast. It is for all signs. It is a broad spectrum reading, so I do speak in broad terms. You need to figure out if and where it fits in your life, if at all. Um, if it doesn't fit, that's okay. It doesn't mean anything's broken or wrong. You're not on your wrong path. This may not be your reading. This reading is originally created for Thursday, the 25th of May. The moon is in Leo. It's not solely set for that date. Um, uh, if you're finding this reading on a different date, but it still makes sense to your situation, by all means, use, utilize it. I do believe any of my readings can be timeless and can reach us when we need them, not when they were originally created for. Um, I will be referring back to the Sunday underpinning reading, so if you see, hear me talking about cards that you don't see in this reading, I'm referring back to that reading, and that is located in the lower left-hand corner at the end of this reading if you want to check it out. Uh, for those of you that are new, please check out the drop-down menu underneath any of my daily videos. In there, there's just some housekeeping rules, things I want you to think about, um, what decks I'm using, um, uh, how to contact me on social media if you want a private reading. Know that I will never reach out to you to initiate the sale of a reading. So if anybody contacts you and says they're me, it's not me. You would have to reach out to me either at my Instagram page or my uh, Facebook business page to initiate the sale of a private reading. There's also simple ways of supporting the channel. You can do so by hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the notification bell so you get notified when I put up new um, uh, content. I do that daily. So um, please hit that sub the subscription, bell and the, uh, subscription button and the notification bell. You can also hit the thumbs up button, leave me a question or comment, um, share the video out. All of that is great ways of supporting the channel. I do read all of, all of the comments and I will respond if if um, I feel that there is need to. So let's see what Spirit wants us to know for the 25th of May. What do the cards want us to know? Okay, so our card for the day is the moon. We've seen a lot of major arcana this week. The moon is Pisces and Cancerian energy. The moon is usually something that's not necessarily fully clear. It's about trusting our intuition, even when we don't feel like we maybe have all of the information. Um, this is about listening to our own internal guidance, first and foremost, and allowing that guidance to guide us through a situation that may seem somewhat confusing or unclear. Um, this is major arcana, so this should be surrounding a fairly significant situation or a situation where we might be feeling emotional or connected to, especially with the Cancerian influence. It could be something that we're unwilling to let go of or that we thought was going to be something different than what it actually is and our, intu our intuition is telling us otherwise. We want to listen to our intuition and follow sort of the unknown path with this card. Um, letting our own internal guidance lead us rather than um, what's going on around us, right? Listening to ourselves and the truth that resides within us rather than um, what's being presented to us outside of ourselves. The moon can sometimes be a card that's sort of scary because it seems unknown. But truth be told, I really think there's an empowerment in the moon because it requires us to trust our intuition, our own internal spiritual or, or intuitional guidance to lead us down the path, even if we can't see the path very clearly. So if there's a decision right now that um, we're unsure about making or a choice or a boundary that we need to draw, that we're unsure if it's the right thing to do, take the time, take the space, give yourself the 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 grace to like sort of tap into your emotions tap into your intuition and follow what seems right and true to you even if it doesn't seem like it's the um the obvious answer or the answer that you know everybody else wants necessarily it's the answer that we would want in all of this it really requires us to have faith in ourselves and in spirit in our intuition and in our emotions 
um, to lead us down a path uh, towards whatever it is that we maybe desire, want, or need. Underpinning this is the Queen of Swords. She is going to be intellectual. She is going to be precise. There could be a little bit of lining up what we know to be true mentally and what we're communicating as our truth and what we're feeling emotionally or intuitionally that maybe doesn't feel like it lines up quite correctly. Trust, with the moon here, it says lean more towards that intuition, lean more towards that internal guidance, and let that un internal guidance unfold in front of you. Um, from there, then use the Queen of Swords, like, int like in intellect, to uh, make cuts where we need to, or take action where we need to, make decisions where we need to. The moon is not a bad card, it's just a card of unknown. And so this is really a, a, like a step in faith, so to speak. I mean, the last three days we've had the temperance card and then the strength card. So this is a significant sort of choice, decision, um, action that we need to take, that we need to be really true and clear on. We have the strength to do it. Remember, strength is the grounding stone through this week. So we want to reside in that strength, the strength of maybe our emotions, our intuition, or our guidance to lead us towards what it is um, we know to be right. And that that knowing to be right is the Queen of Swords um, uh, precision, awareness, discernment, uh, using that to guide us forward, coupled with what we're intuitively feeling or emotionally knowing is going to be key. Even if we can't see, you know, two steps beyond what this next moment may have for us. Let's go to the Untamed Elemental. It is Divine Feminine. I love it. She would definitely be associated with the moon because the moon is the Divine Feminine. She's the dark side of the yin-yang. She is that intuition. Now, Divine Feminine, they are extra cards in this deck, Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. So it's like listening to that inner wisdom, that inner truth, that inner intuition within us. It's sort of, when I look at this design, it feels like it opens us up, it sets us free, it sheds light on something that otherwise was obscured by maybe the darkness of the moon. Let me read Divine Feminine to you. Fulfillment. As the breath of the untouched and the bearer of wilderness, she is the Divine Feminine, and eternally in service to everlasting beauty. The sacred polarity between the Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine is responsible for the totality of existence that lives within each of us, regardless of how we identify ourselves within our own body. Her role is the unfolding discovery of the heart merged with the purity of her counterpart's ever-evolving wonderment. Divine Feminine is ceremonial in bliss, a consecrated womb of no thing from which all things are born. She is the mystery, the void, the abyss, the ecstatic fulfillment of worlds, and the absolute essence of the universe. Divine Feminine announces that something is ready to be fulfilled. Divine Feminine is the voice that assures you that you have everything you need to develop and birth your vision, dreams, and desires. There is no better than time than now to declare your resounding yes to the creative endeavor that is calling your name. The balanced version is openness to fulfilling divine inspiration and ideas. The imbalanced is stuck in false perceptions of inadequacy or lack. And that could be some of the moon's confusion. Like, we want to lean more into the emotions and the intuition and the feeling of the truth of the matter. To bring into balance, begin the creation process, even if you feel frightened. So there may be something here that's unknown to us or feels unknown, obscured, um, unclear, but we have to trust that intuition, that moon's guidance, that queen of swords intellect to lead us forward into this sort of divine feminine understanding that we deserve more, that we can create more, that even if the situation or environment or relationships around us are telling us we can't have it. Indeed, we can, but we have to like go out on a limb and trust whatever it is that our internal guidance is giving us. Let's look at the um, clarifiers. We have the Nine of Cups. So this is about emotional fulfillment for sure. We have the King of Cups. 
So there's a little bit of masculine energy to balance that divine feminine. And we have the five of swords. So there is some sort of conflict or decision, a situation that is transitory, but it is offering some sort of um, discord or challenge that's going on with us. I love that that king is sitting staring straight at the five of swords, like, come at me, bro. <laughs> I feel like what this is, is this is about honoring our completeness, our wholeness, even if we're within a situation that sort of confounds us or confuses us or we're afraid to be creative, to be true to ourselves. The King of Cups says we can be true to those emotions and still come, like hold those emotions within the Divine Feminine, yet protect them and hold them and take action as the Masculine King. The King of Cups is a master of his emotions. He knows when to express them and when not to. And so we might find ourselves holding back within a situation that's offering us some sort of challenge or discord. And I don't mean holding back, meaning like we're not saying what we need to say, but we're saying what we need to say when we need to say it, when it feels right, when it is a, like when it places us first. The Nine of Cups to me says that our intuition, our um, emotions should be strong, should be complete. We need to honor them. This will lead us to that feeling of the Nine of Cups, which is self-satisfaction, self-assurance, self-assurance understanding that putting ourselves first is maybe the exact correct thing to do, even if others, i.e. the Five of Swords, don't understand that, don't want that, or want to prove their point to us uh, to a point of like sort of default or destruction. You know, five, five of Swords isn't necessarily a destruction card per se, but it oftentimes can be an argument or a, a fight where we're trying to prove our point and in doing so, it can come at a loss. And I'm not saying that we would suffer the loss, but someone here or a situation here may not understand us for who we truly are or how we truly feel, and that's okay. The, the truth here is that we need to listen to our own emotion, uh, emotional guidance and be strong in that, be grounded in that, and, and then call upon not only the Divine Feminine, but also some of the masculinity of the King of Cups, who is a cups card, so he's more associated with the feminine, he's willing to protect what he knows to be true emotionally and take action when the time is right. He may not like divulge all of his cards or feelings or or whatever, but he's also not afraid of the situation that's at hand. To me, these cards feel more like, we're for, uh, if anything, we fear or worry that our own power might be too powerful or alienating or scare people off. And I've got to say, well, too bad, you know, that's something that we don't want to sacrifice during this time. And this is an important time to listen to what our own internal guidance is telling us. Because at the end of this, there is this opportunity to feel complete, whole, emotionally sustained and fulfilled, and to trust our intuition, to act upon that, and to do so with authority, to do so with um, capability, to do so with... Um, an awareness that we will make the right decision, we know the right decision to be made, and now it's time to kind of take action regardless of what the situation, relationship, or other party may think, act, or say. Now let's look at the grounding stone. I also feel like this is about, you know, with that grounding stone for the week of strength, this is about grounding in the strength of our own intuition and our own emotions and our own divine feminine aspect of creation. This is about standing true to ourselves, uh, first and foremost, regardless of what the situation, person, or thing is doing in our life, as reckless as it may seem or as bothersome as it may seem, it really doesn't hold up to what's going on within ourselves. So listening to our own internal barometer is going to be key. Trusting that barometer and taking action to create from that barometer, that, that intuitional moon energy, allow that to like guide you rather than what outside influences are indicating to us. Those outside influences, like I said, fives are transitory. They're not going to last long. And if they don't understand it or appreciate it, well, then they're not meant for us anyways. Does that make sense? Here is the grounding stone. We've seen this twice, once on a white stone, now on a black stone. 
And again, black to me is that yin energy of divine feminine. It's that depth. It's enjoy this. Tap into this divine feminine intuitional emotional space and own it. Um, reside in it, preside over it like the king would. Understand that it doesn't make us vulnerable or defenseless. It actually empowers us to maybe even bolster our masculine aspect or our divine masculine to make the decisions that bring a wholeness, a completeness to us surrounding a situation that is honestly, to be true, like beneath us. That's the five of swords. It's like, it's not worth it. We have the Queen of Swords in here. Now, the Queen of Swords would, underpinning this from somebody's reading, the Queen of Swords would come in and lay waste to everybody in the Five of Swords. All she needs to do is drop her sword. She's like no match for this Five of Swords energy. So aligning our emotions and our feelings, our intuition and our divine feminine creativity um, to our mind and our intellect with that Queen of Swords allows us, and then this King of Cups allows us to balance that sort of masculine and feminine within us and make the appropriate decisions we need to be able to move towards our own um, completion, wholeness, um, well-being, right? And enjoy this process. Sink into the depths of it all. Feel it. Um, own it. Intuit it. And embrace it is what I feel like the Divine Feminine card is telling us. Don't avoid it. Don't deny it. Don't let society tell us it's wrong or it's inappropriate or it doesn't fit or it makes us weak. It doesn't make us weak. The King of Cups is here. He shows us that when we embrace it, we can actually rise to a higher understanding and still take action or have a masculine sort of sense of assertion, protection, and authority to bring about the change that we need within our lives to bring us emotional contentment. That is your reading for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the thumbs up button if you did. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave me a question or comment, and um, share the video out. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow and see how this energy transforms. Take care. Bye-bye.